Good evening and welcome to the News Roundup for Monday, February 27. I am Abigail Smythe. Among the stories in this evening's newscast, the security guard shot and killed two others injured in daring mid-morning robbery in St. Catherine. Ten people killed in traffic crashes over the weekend. Staff members of RGD take industrial action yet again. NWC announces more water restrictions. CXC body underscores concern about cheating as buzz about artificial intelligence chatbot intensifies. In business, Jamaica's export earnings for 2022 to exceed 2021. In the region, former member of parliament and government minister in Antigua hit with multiple charges following incident with police. Further overseas, winter storm coupled with snow bringing tornadoes and powerful winds across sections of the U.S. And in sports, Akeem Blake and Tina Clayton win six meter races at Gibson Relays. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Now for the news in detail. A security guard was killed and two others injured in a daring mid-morning robbery by gunmen in Portmore Pines Plaza, St. Catherine, on Monday morning. The gunmen made their escape with about $10 million in cash. According to reports, the security guards employed to Beryllium Limited were delivering money to a Jamaica National Automated Teller Machine ATM when men in a white Subaru motor car pulled up. Two men alighted from the vehicle and opened far with high-powered weapons hitting the guards as they were walking towards the ATM. The men then grabbed two bags containing the money from the guards and made good their escape. One of the male guards was pronounced dead at hospital while the female guard who underwent emergency surgery for gunshot wounds to both legs and the upper body is said to be in serious but stable condition. The other male guard was treated and released. This morning Beryllium Limited had an unfortunate incident in Portmore Pines Mall where one of our trucks was attacked by armed assailants. Uh, in the attack, um, three of our crew members of the vehicle were injured. One was shot fatally. Uh, the other two are at hospital receiving treatment. Um, we, we, we are very saddened by this incident at this point in time. Um, we extend our condolences to the family of the deceased um, member of staff and we wish our other two crew members a speedy recovery. Um, in the incident, um, cash was lost. The investigation is ongoing. We are corporate cooperating with the, fully with the police in this matter. And we hope that we'll be able to bring the perpetrators to book not too far from this. Police say the guards had no chance as they were fired on from behind. In the meantime, Senior Superintendent of Police in charge of the St. Catherine South Police Division, Christopher Phillips, is calling for security companies to review their career operations after this fatal shooting and robbery. Senior Superintendent of Police in charge of the St. Catherine South Division, uh, just confirming that we indeed had a robbery here this morning. 902 to be exact. Um, three security guards from Beryllium were delivering cash to the Jane Bank of Portmore Pines when they were attacked by men traveling in a white Subaru. Um, these men were armed with high powered weapons. Uh, I think, you know, they never had much chance. Um, they went out, they made escape with two bags. We estimate that's over $10 million that they managed to escape with. Um, one security guard has seen succumb to his injuries. The other is in surgery as we speak. I believe the female was a part of it. Um, the third security guard wasn't um, seriously injured. Um, the staff at Jane is obviously traumatized by the experience. I had the opportunity to talk with them earlier and to more or less encourage them and to capitalize on the opportunities that this incident present. Um, my initial assessment of it is that I would make a serious call to the companies that are doing um, courier services to review their operations. 
review their tactical maneuvers, um, review their numbers in terms of these kind of transactions, and to look on the type of people they are using. Two security guards were reportedly shot, one fatally, by the police near the Hailu supermarket in Negril Monday morning. The deceased was identified as 25-year-old Delon Harding of Seton Crescent, Savannah Lamar. Mr. Harding was employed to secure World Security Company. He and the other guard were allegedly mistaken for gunmen. It is reported that shortly after 4 o'clock, a police team responded to a call about a robbery. When the team arrived, officers opened fire, hitting the two security guards. Mr. Harding, who was shot in the head, died at the scene, while the other guard, a 28-year-old of a St. Elizabeth address, was shot in the face. He is in serious condition in hospital. The matter was reported to the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicum, and the JCF's Inspectorate and Professional Standards Oversight Bureau. A gunman was killed during a confrontation with the police in Maroontown, St. James, Sunday morning. The deceased has been identified as Donald Green, otherwise called Duck, from Garlands in the parish. An illegal Glock pistol and 10 rounds of ammunition were seized by the police following the incident. Reports are that the police were conducting a targeted raid when the team came under fire. The police say they returned fire and when the shooting subsided, Green was seen suffering from, grunge, from gunshot wounds. He was clutching the Glock pistol. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Independent Commissions of Investigations, Indicum, has commenced an investigation into the shooting. Five males are dead and another being treated at hospital following a major traffic crash along the Temple Hall main road in St. Andrew Sunday night. Two of the deceased are teenagers. They were all from St. Andrew and have been identified as 20-year-old Tajay Murray, 18-year-old Anthony Fuller, 20-year-old Raheem Campbell, 24-year-old Jamie Marriott, and 17-year-old Romario Moody. It is understood that the young men who were reportedly traveling on motorcycles were returning from a party when they collided with a white Toyota Hiace bus. Four of the victims died on the spot. Head of the St. Andrew North Police, Superintendent Sharika Service, says preliminary information suggests the five males may have been from the same family. She says the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF's crash reconstruction team, is still trying to establish what caused the collision. Meanwhile, the JCF's preliminary crash st statistics indicate it was a bloody 24 hours with 10 fatalities recorded. In addition to the five killed in St. Andrew Sunday night, there were three fatalities in St. Mary, one in Clarendon and another in St. Catherine. Detectives attached to the Maypen police arrested and charged 20-year-old Romeo Fullerton of Effortville in Clarendon for the murder of 27-year-old fruit vendor Keith McIntosh in the parish on Valentine's Day. The police say about 8.30 p.m. McIntosh was at his stall when Fullerton and another man approached him and attempted to rob him. During the altercation, Fullerton brandished a handgun from a bag and opened gunfire, hitting McIntosh in his forehead forehead and chest. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Investigations led to the arrest of Fullerton, who was subsequently charged with murder, possession of a prohibited weapon, possession of ammunition, robbery with aggravation, and the use of a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. His court date is being finalized. Staff members at the Registrar General's Department, RGD, have again taken industrial action over the lack of response from the Ministry of Finance in relation to the compensation review process. Employees called in sick Monday morning. It's the second time in just over two weeks that the employees have taken industrial action. The workers are expressing dissatisfaction with the non-response from the Ministry of Finance to have a meeting with them. The employees say their representative, the Jamaica Civil Service Association, had sent a letter requesting a meeting and was promised a response. However, up to Monday morning, there has been no response from the Finance Ministry. The workers are seeking a meeting to discuss its salary scale. 
The National Water Commission, NWC, has announced that beginning Wednesday, more communities in Kingston and St. Andrew will experience water restrictions as a result of the ongoing drought. It says water supply regulations will now be extended to communities supplied by the Mona network. The NWC explains that the Mona Reservoir's current storage level was at 66% on Friday and is steadily declining due to low inflows from the Hope River and the Yalas Negro Rivers. It says nighttime restrictions are therefore necessary at this time. Water will be supplied to customers 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Areas to be impacted include Mona Heights, Crossroads, Old Hope Road, Gordon Town, Beverly Hills, Halfway Tree, downtown Kingston, Harborview, and other areas. Last week, the NWC implemented restrictions in many communities across Kingston and St. Andrew that are served by the Constant Spring, Seaview, and Hope water systems. The legal team for former Stocks and Securities Limited SSL Chief Executive Officer Mark Crosscree has filed a major lawsuit against blogger and businesswoman Shelian Curran. The lawsuit centers on statements Curran made on her internet talk show. Karan has also been sued for damning comments by social media users, which she republished on her various social media accounts. Mr. Crosscarry's attorney, Monique Morrison, says the businessman and former SSL executive is seeking aggravated damages. The lawsuit notes that Karan has not responded to requests to remove the reportedly defamatory material. Ms. Morrison says allegations republished by Karan that her client is a fugitive of the law are wholly false. The attorney declared in the suit that her client is not responsible for or connected to allegations of fraud facing SSL and has no reason to be on the run, nor was he on the run. Ms. Morrison says attempts by Karan to connect her client to the fleecing of Sprint King Usain Bolt are mischievous, malicious, and lack merit. The attorney says her client is seeking damages arising out of allegations made in one YouTube video, three Instagram posts, and three Twitter posts published by Karan on or about the 23rd of January this year. The lawsuit was filed in the Supreme Court in Kingston. Reputed ex-don of the Spanish town-based Klansman gang Tesha Miller, who was sentenced in January 2020 to 38 years and nine months in prison, has successfully applied to the Court of Appeal to get audio recordings of the judge's summation at his trial. Miller is accusing the judge who sentenced him of being hostile towards him at his trial. He was convicted in relation to the June 2008 murder of Douglas Chambers, the then chairman of the state-owned Jamaican Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC. Miller was found guilty by a seven-member jury on December 3, 2019. He gave an unsworn statement at his trial declaring his innocence. An ex-gang member had testified that Miller ordered the murder of Chambers, who was shot and killed outside the main gate of the JUTC depot in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Miller, who is being represented by attorney at law John Clark, had filed an application in December last year seeking several orders. One of Miller's contentions was that the judge who presided at his trial adopted a hostile attitude towards him whenever he spoke and, among other things, constantly disrupted his counsel. Miller stated in his affidavit that the frequency, tone, and overall mannerism of the judge cannot be adequately reflected in writing and only the provision of an audio recording could suffice to evidence the, just, the injustice. The court, in granting Miller's application in part, ruled that the Registrar of the Court of Appeal, as a matter of urgency, is directed to request the typewritten notes of the plea proceedings conducted on November 3, 2019 and the audio recording of Miller's trial in November 2019. The murder case of nine-year-old Gabriel King is at a standstill as police are still awaiting access to the mother, Amoy Leon Issa's phone. Investigators say the iPhone, which is in the possession of the police, has communication that could help untangle the mystery surrounding the barbaric murder of the child. The nature of the communication was not revealed. An attorney for Leon Issa has, however, rejected the claim, labeling it a disingenuous attempt by the police to cast 
cast her, quote, in a very bad light, end quote. More than a year after the crime that ignited public outrage, the investigation has now hit a dead end, mainly because Leon Issa has not complied with a court order made on September 6 last year to disclose the phone's passcode to the police and her reluctance to cooperate with detectives. According to the senior investigator who disclosed that she now faces arrest for not complying with the court order, immigration records have confirmed that Leon Issa left the island for Canada some time ago. Lawyers for Leon Issa are challenging the order because of privacy rights concerns. But according to the senior cop, detectives have reason to believe that the iPhone contains communication that is linked to the investigation of the child's murder that took place in St. James on the morning of January 13 last year. The body of Leon Issa's nine-year-old autistic son was found on the back seat of her Audi SUV in Fairfield, St. James, with his throat slashed. According to the police, Leon Issa reported that she was slapped in the face and dragged from the vehicle by two men after she slowed down to navigate a pothole-riddled corridor while driving along the Tucker Main Road towards downtown Monte. Bay about 9.30 a.m. The men sped off with the vehicle with Gabriel still on the back seat. Following a police report, a search led to the discovery of the vehicle abandoned on the Fairfield Main Road about 11 a.m. with the body of the child soaked in blood. A bloody knife that was found beside Gabriel's body was confirmed to be the murder weapon. Gabriel's body was cremated on Friday, March 4 last year. As the buzz about chat GPT intensifies, the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, has added its voice to the conversation, underscoring that any form of cheating is a big concern for the regional exam body. The artificial intelligence AI chatbot, which was launched in November 2022, is capable of generating impressively detailed human-like written text and has passed law and business school exams. But but CXC Director of Operations Dr. Nicole Manning says based on the design of the school-based assessment SVA, a candidate's competence should not be determined from one assignment. She explains that the SVA process is expected to assess skills such as complex decision-making, communication, collaboration, creativity, and innovation. Further, she says that there are many other assessment strategies that should be used besides a written assignment to assess students' skills such as peer group critique or oral presentations with structured questioning. She says they believe there should be no difference between the level of concern with a student utilizing the services of a subject matter expert to complete an assignment on their behalf and one who uses chat GPT. Some teachers have recommended a mixture of assignments, independent and supervised, to reduce the opportunity for students to short-circuit the learning process. In the meantime, principal of Campion College, Grace Baston, reasons that until a sophisticated AI detector is developed, chat GPT will pose a challenge in determining the authenticity of students' work and the validity of their grades as a result of their access to the technology. In business, Jamaica's export earnings for 2022 are on track to exceed that of 2021. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica has reported that for the first 10 months of 2022, the country earned 1.43 billion US dollars. That's compared to the 1.25 billion earned for the corresponding period in 2021. The sum earned for exports up to October is close to the 1.44 billion dollars earned from goods sent abroad for the entire year 2021. For the month of October alone, 155 million US dollars was earned. The increase in revenues from total exports was due primarily to an 87% increase in the value of exports of mineral fuels. The growth in total exports was also influenced by a 139% increase in re-exports. In the region, in Antigua and Barbuda, former Member of Parliament and Government Minister Dean Jonas has been hit with multiple charges following an incident at his home Thursday evening. Jonas, the former Minister of Social transformation is alleged to have attacked policemen who had turned up at his Scotts Hill residence to investigate a report
report that he had threatened to kill the mother of one of his children. Jonas, who lost the St. George seat at the January 18 general election, was charged with disorderly conduct, threatening language, resisting arrest and battery of a police officer. He was released on bail late on Thursday and reportedly went to seek medical attention for injuries suffered in the altercation with the lawmen. On the international scene, a winter storm coupled with snow in Southern California has moved eastward, bringing with it tornadoes and powerful winds. Residents in Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Texas are being urged to seek shelter as of Monday. There were reports of damaged homes and downed power lines, leaving thousands without electricity. Severe weather is expected to continue to the upper Midwest later this week. Californians have already faced mass power outages, flooding, and the closures of both motorways and beaches as the storm swept the U.S. state. More than 120,000 people, with the majority in Los Angeles, are without electricity. Over 52,970 people across Nevada, Texas, Oklahoma, and Missouri are also without power as the storm moves northeast. The storm's wind speed is required is equivalent to that of a Category 3 hurricane. And finally, in sports, Akeem Blake and Tina Clayton won the men and women's 60 meters at the Gibson McCook Relays on Saturday at the National Stadium. Blake prevailed in a time of 6.42 seconds, beating Oblique Seville, who also registered 6.42 seconds, while Clayton won her race in 7.02 seconds. Meanwhile, Ramona Burchell captured the women's 60 meter A final in 7.04 seconds. In the high school section, Kingston College captured the Class 1 boys 4x100 meters final in 40.14 seconds, while Heidel took the girls' event in 44.25 seconds. The mile relay open races went to Jamaica College and Edwin Allen. And that's it for your news roundup for today. I am Abigail Smythe. Have a good evening and see you next time. Teach them! Hey, yo, yellow! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Like the video before you go. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And remember to share the video with your friends and family. And browse the channel for more quality content. Until next time, walk good, my friends. Teach them!